So tell me, what, where does the Darug fit in with what you know? The Darug, well, Darug people lived on fresh water. That's one thing I know. Okay, you can find anyone who lived around closer to the estuaries around Sydney, okay, spoke um, a dialect of Darug. Okay, coastal Darug. Well, they break it up when you look at it. It's broken up into coastal Darug near the coast and hinterland Darug. Okay, and they were dialects. And dialect means basically, you know, I speak to you in, in my language and you speak to me in yours because there's commonality enough. We can yeah. understand each other and communicate, right? That's my understanding of it. And Darug language was spoken all the way up to nearly Gosford along the coast, okay? And it's spoken down into the Shire and the cutoff point is about Bundina. Okay, so Bundina is where Darug comes in. Right, and that description that I give you also coincides with rocker. Okay, so rock art coincides with these languages. When you get up into like the, the sort of like the, the upper Hawkesbury area, okay, that's when it starts to become Darkigen. And it starts to change its language group as well. Darkigen language is closer to Wiradjuri language, okay, and it's closer to, to the art as well, is, is something that's influenced by it. We'll come, we'll come over here. There's some carvings over here. Well, not carvings, but copies of carvings. Yeah. Um, when you get down to like Camden, that's where um, hinterland Darug, Gundagara, and Darug will all meet right around Camden. Camden? Yeah. Camden. So, did they have big. Did they have corroborees and big meetings? You'd have to, well, you'd have to guess that they did. Yeah, you you'd would. Have to, yeah. See, because you've got to remember that these people um, were intermarried to each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't marry someone. Gadigal people around here would not be marrying Gadigal people, right? They'd be marrying Gamaragal people, all right? Or they'd be marrying um, Wongal or Wangal people. You know what I mean? They'd be intermarrying with those. What's interesting, though, is that there is no evidence that suggests that Coastal Darug people intermarried with hinterland Darug people. Right, that's one thing that I have read. Yeah, these are copies of some of the carvings. And that's a great one. And that's a, that's a legit carving. And that's a story, you know. But the only thing that remains of that is the carving itself up in Kuringai Chase National Park. We've seen it. Yeah. And Uncle Max is... Do you know Uncle, Uncle Max Dullamunmun Harrison? No, is he... Uh, Ewan, Ewan. Ewan, is he? Yes. All right. But that story yeah. and that drawing exists in various spots down the coast oh, right. on the sandstone. And okay. So we've been down a bit, because that's what song lines are about. Yeah. The, the story's carried on through yeah. the drawings and the and like we're doing now, standing yeah. here and... Yeah. Uh, well, you know, <clears throat> looking at it initially, you can tell the, the character with the eyes <clears throat> and no mouth, he's a creation ancestor. Yeah, he's a creator. And you always know creators because they've got eyes and they don't have a mouth. Because, <clears throat> and like on my country, that I was told, well not on my country, it's on, um, it's on, it's on one rural country that I hold kinship with. Um, there's a cave up there. It's called the Creator's Cave. They, they use the, um, yeah, it's the Creator's Cave. People use the B word. Okay, to, to describe creation ancestors in Aboriginal culture, right? But I've been taught that I can't name my answer, my, my creator, right? But when you see my creator, he stands there like that, and he's the same. He's got his arms out, there's seven lightning strikes. You know, seven's a lucky number in Aboriginal culture. It has to do with astrology and astronomy. Right? Seven sisters. Seven sisters, right? Um, and that's the seven mobs of the Hunter Valley. And he has no mouth, even. The reason creation ancestors and spirits don't have a mouth is that they speak to you for everything they created. They don't need a mouth. Right? But they need eyes to watch over you to make sure you're, you're, um, you know, you, you're looking after the country. Yeah. That's another interesting carving too, this one. So this is a copy of a carving that's in Gringo Chase National Park. <clears throat> but this carving is a fake. A fake? That's a fake carving that they've copied here. <laughs> Someone, I don't know, some smart has got up there and gone, hey, I can make an Aboriginal carving. And they thought they could, but the way that, that we know that this is a fake is that it's got two arms and two, two ears. When you see carvings around here, 
they never have a silhouette like that. They'll always have like a front back leg and, and one ear. Yeah. Okay, and that, that's another thing that coincides with coastal Darug language is that. So when you see something like that, it's a fake. It looks cool, but it's fake. And unfortunately, 